Last time on The Space Between, we had another great time at Fantasy Fest 2019. As this was our third year, we kind of got into the swing of things. We had a blast wrapping up October with a oh Halloween my charter. Gosh. <laughs> Heading back to Fort Lauderdale right as the power boat races were headed for Key West. And with the sun setting on our 2019 charter season, we headed home for the holidays with the family. <laughs> no. Oh my God. <laughs> hilarious. Hi, I'm Scott. And I'm Holly. And this is The Space Between. Hey, hey, I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. Illuminate my future brand, so thankful for everything. Rejuvenating my inner light as I work hard for all I need. Open arms, embrace the life, and all the way you gave to me. I work, it pays off. I'm happy now, it's paying me. Do the shit and love it on a day and leave. Say you hate your job, but you'll never leave. Never leave, but that ain't gonna be me. That ain't gonna be me. My brother called me up, said he saw me on TV. This year, we ran down to the stadium for a New Year's charter. That was a lot of fun. Oh, I think it's getting ready. <laughs> Almost, yeah. didn't I? Holly, I really Yeah, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I got that on video just saying it. Good written. <laughs> you knew that was going to be the good one, too, didn't you? Uh, uh, that was the good one. <laughs> well, it's maintenance time again. The, uh, the boat's down from her annual maintenance. Um, we usually do this during um, December, January. And we've got a new product that we want to uh, check out. I was really excited about this because <clears throat> I have a problem with the smell that's in a saltwater toilet. And I know everybody says, well, I'll just switch over to fresh water. You've got a water maker on board. Well, fresh water uses a lot of water, even with a water maker on board, especially if you've got eight people on board. So, I came across this nifty gadget called the Commoderizer. <clears throat> so we're going to install this. We're going to give it a try, see how it works. But the basic concept to it is, let's see, in the packaging we have, this looks, ah, okay, this is a stainless steel with, uh, okay, so this is a chlorine resistant valve kit for the pump. But here's the catch, after talking um, with the owner, I'm going to put this commoderizer after the pump, not before it. Um, as everybody knows, the salt water grows in your intakes and so when you hit the button for the first time it smells so you got to keep pumping and pumping and pumping it well salt water also grows really quickly in a toilet if it's just sitting there so when we leave we usually uh, do what we call a fresh water flush which is we just hit the button pump all the water out while we're putting fresh water from the shower in um, and that that seems to work out pretty good um, <clears throat> what this nifty little device does is you can either work it one of two ways. You can take off your strainer, that's the intake, right before your pump, usually. You can screw the commoderizer on top of it unscrew it and then you drop your chlorine pellets in here put the top back on and there's a small hole that releases uh, the chlorine into the toilet with every flush now on a cat like this we have one pump that runs two heads on each side so that's a good thing we don't need four of them but we would need two but we're going to try this out first make sure it works out and then if it does, we're going to switch over to put one on the other side. So what's in the box is basically the commoderizer. <clears throat> now, he sent me another uh, saltwater strainer 
because what we're going to do with this is I am going to mount this one after the pump and <clears throat> he already pre pre reversed the valve there's a whoop, there's a valve right here and this has been pre reversed for me so that it can go after the pump instead of before the pump so it can be installed either way but um, the way we're going to do it today is we're going to install it after the pump. And the benefits of that are, or why you do, are you choosing to do it that way? Well, apparently the chlorine, when it sits right before the pump, uh, is really hard on the pump diaphragms and uh, valves. But I don't know. I guess if it sat for a long time the chlorine could start to but everything in a pump is plastic or stainless but I haven't opened up one of these pumps so I don't know but that's the theory so we're going to put it after the pump so that we know for a fact there's no issues but honestly I may put this one before the pump just to see what the difference is the other thing it does is it cleans up calcium and takes the calcium out of the lines so if you take a look at this picture here you'll see that the calcium just gets solid in these tubes from the salt waste from your body. And once it gets to that point, it gets to the point where you know, you're know you trying to pass everything through a little bitty canal like this. Well, what this is gonna do is it's gonna clear up all those salt crystals, push them on through, and send them out into the tank, and then obviously down back down into the water. So the kit, the regular kit, which we'll put a link in the description down below, comes with one commoderizer, it comes with the pump uh, change out, and it comes with two tablets. Each tablet is supposed to last you somewhere between 15 and 30 days. We'll let you know. Um, I got an extra tub of tablets. Now, these are chlorine, I can smell it. So I'm not real sure where we're going to store this just yet, but we'll let you know. Let's get on it. So our pump is under here, which also where, as you can hear, is the air conditioner, which we'll, I guess we'll turn that off, and Holly's secondary freezer. So we're going to have to pull all this out. <clears throat> so best laid uh, plans of mice and men. The uh, we actually have two pumps, one per head, which I could have sworn was not the case, but it obviously is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back, reverse the valve on it, and go back to the original way of doing it, <clears throat> and that will also make it much easier to change the tablets in the future. So what we're going to do, we're going to crack the strainer, I'm pretty sure this is above our water line not we'll know in a second and we now know it's not <laughs> it's okay. so as far as the strainer goes we're not going to use that this um, the way this works is you have to punch this valve out <laughs> fortunately I don't have the tool to do so. So we're going to have to so what I'm doing is I'm looking for a socket that's going to fit in here that we can push the valve out. Keep her though. Just like that. So see, the socket works just fine. So, except now I got the socket stuck. <laughs> okay. So what we're gonna do is we knocked it out pretty easily, and what we're gonna do is reverse it now so that these two guys are facing up. Drop it in. Countersink it just a smidge. This goes in here. Check it out. That means 
this just goes. So. so anyway, what I've done is I've decided to change this thing really quick like while the seacock is still open. Probably don't suggest that, but bah, it worked. And there we go. All I did was drop the cup down into the or the and screw that on. I mean it, it's literally that easy to put it on. Now let's go flush some toilets and see. What it looks like. That one's gonna smell bad, I can tell by the looks of it. So this is a freshwater flush. And so, as you can see, even after three weeks, <clears throat> it's not the prettiest. But let's see what happens. That water's flowing, that's a good sign. We're back two weeks later. Um, we actually got to take a trip down to the BVI's in the time uh, since we installed it. And we noticed there was a nice fresh smell coming out of the toilet, but not so fresh of a smell coming out of the bilge. But you can't fix everything. But we came to find out that the BVI's rental fleet, at least on the 52 power cat that we uh, rented, which that video is coming up, um, <clears throat> had the commoderizers on them. And so when you urinated, it didn't smell horribly. And uh, so that was our kind of our first shot at it. But here we are, two weeks later. Water's a little low in the toilet, but that's to be expected. But the toilet's nice and clean. And I think we have a winner. So here we are about a year and a half later <clears throat> and we're taking a look at the water maker I built and installed. It, um, it works really well um, and we're still running on the original pressure washer and it's gone a year and a half for a $60 pressure washer that beats the hell out of a cat pump. Um, <clears throat> a couple things I've noticed that, I, that I, I, I don't like is my low boost pressure is gone. Um, I don't know if there's crap in the line or what, but everything else works. I like the little, um, I can set this to come on for say 30 seconds. It opens a valve out there. That's my fresh water flush. And 32 seconds from now, or however long I set it. You can hear the water running through the membrane. You can see the water uh, bubbling up through it. Our membrane's in here. We haven't had to change a membrane. We have had to change quite a bit uh, more <clears throat> filters, pre-filters, than what I expected, but that's to be expected, I guess, uh, after talking to other people. A lot of people take their filters out and wash them and leave them out and uh, for two or three bucks and uh, we only use the water maker about five times a year while we're chartering I just put new ones in I had a couple bucks a piece it works real simple if you remember <clears throat> when you get the water flowing or the boost pump which in this case is uh, we've got the fresh water coming in we can turn on our high pressure pump and all we do is we dial up our pressure watch it and what you're really watching for is you're watching for your flow meter to get to about 20 gallons per hour and if you remember uh, there was a whole thing on why we needed to be at 20 gallons of it per hour and why we don't and yes we can put more pressure in it but um, we don't want to because we'll blow the membrane go back and watch the original video if you want to see that we're only pushing about 200 psi with fresh water when it gets to salt water it runs somewhere right around um, 800 psi to a thousand depending in the Bahamas it's about 800 in the Keys it's about 950 but it works great once it's up and running you can just simply switch it now it's pouring into the tank and then to shut it all down it's just a reverse go back to overboard open your pressure wash what that does is that allows the fresh water to flow over the membrane our flow drops to zero Shut the pump off and flush it, uh, fresh water flush it about once every two weeks, 
just to keep the membrane, just to keep the water rolling through the membrane because um, up front is the filters that if you go back to the original video you'll see there's a carbon block in there that takes the uh, chlorine because chlorine is a definite no-no when it comes down to uh, RO membranes. But all in all, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I give this system a thumbs up. They sell them at Sailor Man, and bang for the buck, you can't beat it. So today, our project, we are tackling Holly's table. Holly's not here, and there's a reason for that. We'll get into that later. But if the guys over at Stone Coat taught me anything, they taught me that prep is essential. So let's get this place taped off and tie backed and then covered with a tarp and get rolling. So I'm laying down Tyvex and then I'm going to throw a tarp over the top of it just to protect my C deck floors. They need all the help they can get. 220. And basically, all I'm trying to do. And it is sand just the top of it. To get the epoxy to adhere to it. I don't think there's going to be an issue. Get down low. See where you've been. And like I said, we're not out to do anything but scratch the surface up a little bit. Get the epoxy to heat here. Now, what I've got standing by is my torch. I've got my drill with the paddle bed on it. For mixing. And I've got my heat gun. Don't really think we'll need the heat gun because we're not pushing things around. So what we're going to do is use the torch to pop our bubbles after we chop it. Here we go. What I love about the Stone Coat products are that they do make them really easy to use. Ooh, stuff's kind of cool. Or it may just be that thick normally, I don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the line through the cup so that I know exactly when I got the right amount of product in up. We always put our lids back on just in case my clumsy butt stumbles over them. That would never happen. Ah, oh, there we go. That's much more liquidy. Because as long as A and B don't touch, this stuff will stay fairly wet for a while. Now, once they interact inside the container, all bets are off. All right. So, that's one. I measured this out. So, a quart should be enough to do the whole table. Here we go. chop brush, push it around, and once it's out of the container like this, the 
takes it a lot longer to start to cure. Now I can tell you, calculations are not quite right. So, I'm going to notch this out, spread it out. And then we're going to mix up another batch real quick like. Be careful not to mix them one and one and one and the other. Or they'll start to react automatically. out of my project. I tell you what, we had a great time with the guys from Stone Coat, Mitch and Mike, and while they were here, and I love their product. Our next uh, venture, I finally got my she shed rebuilt, and she's a bigger and better she shed. And so we're going to put a stone coat flooring on, on it. Okay. I don't know if the camera can see it or not. Can definitely see our high and low spots on the table. Really pretty amazing the way this stuff flows. I am beginning to wonder if even this was enough. finish. It's been about 45 minutes since I laid down the Tyvek. We mixed up the product and we got it on the table. It's flowing out very nicely. Now the biggest thing, everybody wants to mess with it, don't. Leave it alone. So it's been a few hours now and I'm going to come out here and we have a bug right here. We have a couple little spots that I'm going to have to pick and torch and then we're gonna do our edges again. So I've tried to stay away from the project because you have a tendency to want to mess with it. Where did that bug go? And if you torch a bug he's gonna turn black. If you torch some dust he just goes away. There he is. Ah. Kind of like operation. Just get him out. Saw something else in there too. This. What the hell is that? Who knows? But anyway, now see we've got two big caves there where I picked at it, but mystically and magically. Well, it's not really magic. We heat up the epoxy. Away it goes. Now it's starting to cool off out here a little bit. 
I am just heating up the project. Oh, another bug. I was afraid of that. This is one of the major drawbacks of pouring outside. Epoxy up just to get it to flow a little bit and then hopefully it'll fire a little faster. And as you can see, as I heat it up, it starts to drip again. And that's okay. I'm just trying to get things to flow nice and smoothly. Quit messing with it. Leave it. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see much more because shortly it's going to get dark. And when it gets dark, I'm not turning any lights on because that's going to attract the bugs. Now, I'm hoping that we fire a little bit more within the next hour before the sun sets and the bugs come out. Well, all in all, the table came out great. And best of all, Holly loved it. So I would say that's a definite win in my books. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to tune in next time as we head for the BVIs. And don't forget, we got a celebrity on board.